Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Today I wanted to talk about a 1978 movie called The Silent Partner. It starred Elliot Gould, Christopher Plummer, Susanna York. Directed by Daryl Duke, written by Curtis Hansen. Hansen was adopting a, I think it was a Scandinavian novel that had been filmed uh, once before. And, uh, hit, and Hansen, at this time of his career, was very much into Hitchcock and developing the mechanics of Hitchcockian suspense. And this is a movie with lots of twists and turns, surprises. Um, reportedly, Hitchcock himself actually saw the movie and gave its approval. I don't know if the story is true, but I like to believe it is. Um, and the storyline is, uh, it has a kind of Hitchcockian uh, uh, veneer as well in, in a average person getting caught up in a, um, in a, uh, a robbery attempt. He, he is a teller. He's somehow scoped out the fact that, that the Santa that is roaming through a 100% occupied shopping mall uh, is got his eye on a merchant's bag that is being deposited um, at this teller's window. So the teller takes the money quickly, moves it aside, so when Santa does indeed come, Santa being the original bad Santa, <laughs> comes to rob him, uh, he only gives him the cash that, uh, that other than, the I think it was supposed to be something like $50,000, and the, the, the teller is played by Elliot Gould, and he is a, uh, uh, a, a man who is uh, profoundly unhappy with his nine to five job. Is, is, uh, he, wants, he wants to escape. He's got a kind of unrequited passion for one of, the, one of his co workers, who's played by Susanna York and beautifully lit by cinematographer uh, Billy Williams. Um, so we have these Hitchcockian moments because now this man is very clever the, uh, and he needs to be because uh, the bad Santa, played by Christopher Plummer, with eyes that just seethe with sadism, <laughs> discovers, figures out what, hit, what his silent partner has done and now begins the cat and mouse game. And Elliot Gould as the mild-mannered uh, Bank teller is uh, more than up to the task of uh, of uh, dueling the uh, this uh, sadistic uh, psychopath. I mean, we see him; we're clearly showing him to be a psychopath. Unlike Hitchcock, though, uh, this film doesn't have any moral qualms of the uh, of, of, uh, of Elliot Gould's bank teller's. Uh, uh, robbery. This is the 70s. Anything goes. Sticking it to the man with a capital M is going to be applauded by audiences. And Hitchcock, uh, more Catholic view of crime, uh, you know, the wages of sin uh, can sometimes be death, as Janet Lee finds out uh, when she performs a similar robbery in, in Psycho. Another thing that is very much part of the Anything Goes 70s uh, uh, kind of uh, feel to movies is that all the actresses must be topless, <laughs> in, <laughs> at least briefly, at one time or another. So Susanna York, uh, there's another actress, uh, Celine Lomez, who's very good as a, a young woman who befriends um, uh, Elliot Gould. She may not be who she seems to be. And then there's another actress, Gail, Gail Doms, I think her name is, who is the trainee in the office. All of them must, of course, become topless and as the strictures of the 1970s go. And there's even a scene in a massage parlor as well. And what and besides and besides the cat and mouse game, there's also a kind of comedy of manners going on <laughs> with all this sexual intrigue that's going on in this uh, bank. Uh, in this uh, uh, branch, uh, this mall branch of, of, of this bank where um, Susanna York, the object of Elliot Gould's desire is having an affair with her married boss. Uh, one of the other coworkers, a male, has got his eyes on everybody, especially a trainee, new trainee, blonde, um, and uh, seemingly uh, not, not
not quite bright. And John Candy, of all people, is is on the is on the is also an employee there. He doesn't have a big part, and, and uh, he's part of the comedy of manners in that he he and this new trainee have a have an affair, and, but he's cuckold even before <laughs> before he is he's at the altar at the altar as as a groom, uh, and so. But the film then has some very grisly moments, and I mean, astonishingly grisly, unexpectedly grisly. And the director, Daryl Duke, didn't want to shoot that scene, and uh, I think he's really responsible for the um, the emphasis and how well done, how how, how well he did. He he, he uh, directed these uh, other scenes that aren't part of the suspense. And I don't know if it was Curtis Hansen. I know Curtis Hansen has said that uh, he did direct some scenes, and then uh, he was part of the post-production. Daryl Duke was a, a Canadian television director. He did make a film called Payday with Rick Torn that, uh, about uh, five or six years before that. And I think he only made one other movie. He basically stayed in TV. Curtis Hansen, of course, went on to L.A. Confidential and Wonder Boys and a very successful Hollywood career. Um, so a word has to be said for Christopher Plummer's delight in playing. We, we accept his role, his sadism, mostly because we watch Christopher Plumbing, Plummer having so much fun shedding his goody-goody image. And, um, and the duel between the two of them is, is really quite cleverly written by, by Curtis Hansen. We also get a, a, a jazz score. I think it's the only feature film that Oscar Peterson, a uh, great jazz pianist, uh, scored for a movie, and it's very, very good. I saw the film on uh, Criterion Channel. I think it's only going to be up there for a couple more weeks. Uh, it's also in the U.S. is playing uh, streaming uh, for free if you have Canopy, and, uh, and also rental at various uh, streaming as a rental on Amazon and a few other places. So it is available uh, on streaming, that, but the King of Lorber also put it out in 2019, and I'm going to get that that version one of these days because I want to I want to hear the commentary. And there's also I think a 25 minute uh, contemporary interview with Elliot Gould where he looks back on the film with uh, with great affection, and he should because he's very good in this movie. He, he had a lot of non hits in the 1970s, made some strange choices. Uh, but I think he gives a, a very uh, credible and uh, quite affecting performance in this film, especially he's, he's more than up to the duel with a, uh, you know, a master a theatrical actor like, um, like Christopher Plummer. Okay, that'll be, about wrap it up for this uh, brief discussion of The Silent Part, a movie I really enjoyed a lot, and it does have a cult reputation, uh, so I, I would definitely recommend it, especially to people that are interested in Curtis Hansen movies, Ellie Gould. Um, it's uh, de definitely one not pass by, at least. Um, okay, that'll about wrap it up. Thanks, everybody who stuck with me to the end. You guys take care. I'll catch you next time.